My parents became Adventists when uh, two of the, uh, one was a minister and the other was a teacher, but uh, they decided to come to our area. They pitched a tent in our yard and went from home to home in the country, which covered several miles, and uh, invited all the people to come to the meetings and uh, they were gonna study the Bible together. And uh, they continued for, well, all summer long. They had many of the people who, who were Baptists, most of them were convinced that the Sabbath was the right day to keep and uh, they, um, they were planning to organize a church there. And uh, so it was a very, very successful summer's work that they did there because, um, and we had no church building. They organized the group and we met in different homes. And that went on for several years while they were trying to raise money to, uh, to build a church. Because I remember when it was our turn to have church at our house, it was very exciting because my, the closest neighbor was a mile away that they had children. We had no one to play with, just, just our own, own family. But when church was at our house, there were all kinds of children that we could uh, visit with and, and, and enjoy. And uh, it was an all day occasion because there were no cars yet. Everybody came with horse and wagon and uh, they stayed all day. We had a meal together. Everybody would bring food, but my mother always fixed um, extra food on Friday so that if anybody was hungry, they'd have something to eat. And uh, we looked forward to church every week because it was our social outlet also besides just being <laughs> in church because you, when your closest neighbor is a mile away, you don't see them very often. My mother, and my Aunt Mary, who was just a year younger than, than my mother, they were very close and they were both convinced that they should keep the Sabbath. And um, my mother was uh, very sure that Aunt Mary was too, but the fellow that she was about to marry uh, he came to the meetings also. That was, he ended up being my Uncle Jack. He, um, uh, told Aunt Mary, my mother was getting ready to be baptized and Aunt Mary wanted to be baptized also. And Uncle Jack said, well, why don't you wait just a little bit? I want to study a little more. And he said, maybe I'll come with you, you know. And uh, so Aunt Mary believed him and, and, and waited. And he never, however, he studied, he decided he was going to stay Baptist and he never became an Adventist. And Aunt Mary didn't either, you know. And they raised a good sized family, eight children, lovely family. Those cousins, whenever they came to our house, it was always on Sunday and that was a special day, you know, and, and uh, uh, a lovely family, but the, none of them ever became Adventists. When those meetings were held uh, in the tent that was pitched in our yard, my parents became Adventists and uh, there was no church building, but there was a small group that was organized there and they met in the different homes 
And um, that was a, a, a thing that everybody just enjoyed. Uh, whenever they would meet in a home, they'd decide where they were going the next Sabbath. And, and uh, it was an all day uh, get together because Sometime they had a Bible study, and sometime it, uh, well, they always had a Bible study, but sometime they studied more, you know. Somebody would come up with, that, that they didn't understand a certain part of the Bible, and so uh, everybody would start looking up texts, and they would continue with their Bible study, and they stayed until it was time for everybody to get home because there were chores to do, because these people were all farmers. Grassy Butte was our address. It had a post office, a grocery store, and a garage, and a Lutheran church, I think, and a Catholic church. And that was about it. And that was two miles away from our farm. There was no postal delivery, so if we wanted to get our mail, we, we went to Grassy Butte to pick it up at the post office. Oh, and by the way, the post office was made of sod. And uh, that eventually became something that tourists came to see that there was still, because they preserved it after they built uh, a, a different post office using lumber and all that. And, and that was a tourist attraction. More people came and took pictures because the, the caption was their Grassy Butte post office. <laughs> so we had, <laughs> a special thing going on <laughs> in North Dakota. <laughs> and I don't remember how many years, I'm not sure what year they built the church, but I remember when finally they got enough money together, one of the members who lived about 25 miles from our place was, um, I think he was pretty much a self-instructed builder, but he knew a little bit about how to build. And all of the members, with his directions, this man's directions, they all took their turns to help build that church. And that was a great day when we finally, and they built it, uh, one of the members, about halfway between the uh, people that lived in the northern part and in the southern and eastern part, uh, they built it about halfway in there so everybody would have about halfway to go to church. <laughs> it wasn't 30, 35 miles, it was more like 12, 15 miles to, to go to church. And he had land there and he donated the land and it was built uh, right there, just a little ways from the highway so that, and everybody knew that it was an Adventist church. And uh, it's been quite a while now, but when my husband was still living, we visited there to make sure how everything was still there. They were still meeting there, but they also had organized another church, an English church in Kildare, which was, Kildare was 30 miles away from, from Grassy Butte, and uh, they had an, an English church now in, in uh, North Dakota there too, it wasn't. But there were still older people there that enjoyed the Russian language, and uh, so they would get together, they'd have their Sabbath school lesson in Russian, and, and uh, it was just like the, the olden times. I think most of those older people, because they were older than me, and I'm the old, older person now, <laughs> they, uh, 
they have passed away now, and uh, so I don't know what what's. Uh, I don't think that there's a Russian church there anymore.